right, welcome everybody to the North Fork of the Malheur River on a beautiful day. We are here to show everybody how to do a discharge reading. So what we have essentially done is we've taken ourselves to a location just upstream of the mouth of our stream. Now what we are doing is we're looking for an area with laminar flow, also known as the smoothest area of water on the surface you can find. And so what we did here is we got ourselves below a fast water unit and upstream of another slow water unit down below us and we found ourselves some area with some small gravel and quite laminar flow. However, as you can see, we've already got our tape set up for our cross section and we can see that we have some issues in the water here. So we have some rocks in our way that are causing some extra turbulence that we don't really want in our sample unit. So John over there is going to do some stream bed manipulation for us and clear this area before we get started so we can have the most laminar flow possible. Great, coming along nicely. All right, John has removed all the rocks in our way. Oh wait, we got one more stick halfway in the water. Let's get that cleaned out. Thank you, John. Beautiful, now we are happy with our set. We have our cross section set up over the channel, above the water so it's not getting snagged up into the current at all and suspended perpendicular, perfectly perpendicular to the flow. Perfect job, guys. All right, next order of business is we're gonna get our flow meter going. Bella over here has a Marsh McBurney flow meter, and it has a flow uh, bulb here on the end in which we need to use and attach it to our top setting head rod, which she has. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna put this on the top setting head rod near the base. It has a place to screw on. We have a set screw, which we are going to tighten and as you can see on the side of it, we have a flow direction. So we want to make sure the bulbs face forward. And we want our, our wire coming straight off the top, the same angle as our set screw. So that looks perfect. Awesome. Next, what we want to do is we're going to bring it over and start taking our first discharge reading. So we'll come over. And if we had to set up our tape a little bit further up on the bank than just right at the edge of water due to it being such a flat bank, we needed to elevate it off of the water. So essentially what we're going to do is we're going to start right at the edge of water. So we come down here and we're looking for our edge of water. So it looks like right about here is our edge of water. So we have here's six feet. We're coming out to 0.8. So our first, our start of our, our initial point is 6.8. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring that over. And we're going to put that onto our data sheet. And John has this written down. So distance from initial point is 6.8. Perfect. And so then next what we want to do is we want to make sure we get at least 25 readings. And we always know that the two edge readings are going to not be very much flow. So we are going to do 27. We're going to divide that into our full width of our channel. And so we come down here and we get our other edge of water. And we are at 23.5, right at our other edge of water. So we will subtract our first reading from this reading and we'll get our wet width. What does that come out to? 16.7. Alright, we had 23.5 minus 6.8. 16.7 is our wet width. So then we need to divide that by 27. And that ends up coming out to just over 0.6. So we know that we want we're going to and we're going to reduce that number to 0.6 to make sure that we get enough readings throughout the entire sample unit. So we'll go 0.6 between each reading. Now the first tricky part in which we have to do is we have to find where we want to take our initial discharge. And so at first we know we're at 6.8 and we don't we know we don't want our first cell. So our first cell is going to be 0.6 wide, so we do not want to take a flow in here because of how shallow the water is. We won't get any kind of a reading out of this. So what we want to do is we want to come to our next cell and we want to find the middle of it. So that would mean we would do 0.6 plus half of the next cell. So we're going to literally go 0.9 from our initial starting point to do our first discharge reading. And that puts us at 7.7. .7. So Bella is going to bring her top setting head rod and put it in line with 7.7 .7 without touching the actual tape across the stream. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at our top setting, top setting head rod here, and we see we have notches throughout the entire thing. 
Each one of these signifies a tenth of a foot. You also notice that there's one with two lines. This will be a half a foot. The nun up here has three lines. These are whole foot readings. So what we're doing is we're using the top setting head rod to figure out the depth of our stream. So right here you can see we have 0.5. This is our first two marked locations. We're going to go down one, two, three. So right here we are at about 0.2 depth. And then Bella is going to give that information to her recorder, John, and he will write that down into the depth column on the data sheet. And so 0.9 was our first column, so we went halfway into the second, and then for our width, and then our depth was 0.2. Perfect. And so then she, what Bella is going to do is she's going to adjust the head rod in order to allow the bulb to be 60% below the water surface, the head rod itself must be adjusted to the depth. And here, as we see, we have tenths of feet, and then we have a zero, and we have a one. And that zero and one, those are the whole feet, and then these are our tenths. So she's going to put the zero at two, so 0 0.2. And then she will hold that in place. She's then going to make sure to stand at least 15 inches away from the bulb itself to make ensure that we do not affect flow. And then what she's going to do is she's going to turn on her flow meter. And then what we see here is we are starting to get a number. And we have this area that says period right here. And we have a counter working its way down. And what this counter signifies is the 40 second intervals in which we need to take our sample. And so what this allows us to do is just wait for this counter to count all the way down. And then that will be the 40 seconds. And at that point it will display a fixed number on the screen in which that will be relayed to the recorder and, and that will go into our feet per second, our velocity for that specific cell. So as you see, this is a, a little bit of a painstaking process. We have to sit and wait the 40 seconds per sample. We're going to be doing this at least 25 times across the stream to get an accurate discharge reading. And so we will wait for this to average. Essentially what we are doing is we are averaging the velocity going through that cell over a 40 second period and then what number it provides, we will actually record on our data sheet. There it goes. John, we're at 0 0.64 feet per second. And we come over here. We see John and the velocity at point, feet per second. He has 0 0.64 entered. And then we will continue to go into our next sampling into our next sampling unit. So we're looking at our next width is just 0.6. We established earlier that 0.6 was the interval we wanted to use. Even though our first one was 0.9 to get into the center of our second cell, we want to go 0.6 throughout the rest of the sampling. In which case, we will add 0.6 to our 7.7 .7 number, and that will take us out to 8.3. And then, so Bella will then take the top setting head rod and go to that 8.3 for her next discharge reading measurement. And we will look down onto the top setting head rod. We can see here's 0.5, we're down one tenth, so we're at 0.4. And then she will relay that to her recorder. And as you see, we have depth is 0.4, our width is going to be 0.6 now. And we will continue this throughout our entire sampling sequence until we get to the other bank. All right, here we are back on our discharge form. We also made a little mistake ourselves. We noticed that our first, in our very first reading, our distance from initial point, we did not actually take a discharge in this first column because of the negligible flow. So we have a depth of zero and we have no velocity in that actual cell since we did not take a reading at the very edge of the water. And another thing we wanted to also hit on is when we are taking our flow measurement on our flow meter, you will see that it is continuously counting no matter what. So basically when you move to your next sampling location on the tape, you'll want to actually hit the clear button, also known as the on button on the left side, and that'll restart the counter. Once you hit it hard enough, there it is. That'll restart the counter right for you right then. So you don't have to wait through half of another cycle you can just start brand new and get your 40 second reading right away. All right, so before we finish up, Bella's gotten a pretty far across the stream channel. As you see, we're getting closer to our other edge of water. So we wanted to jump in here 
and let you guys kind of see how we deal with the very end. So um, basically we're going to move on to our next point and John is going to tell Bella the next interval. And so she'll bring, just to revisit, she'll go right to 20.3 on the line and get her top setting head rod lined up with it, making sure that she has the ball actually in line with facing upstream in the current, perpendicular to flow. John, we're at point nine duck. So she just found her depth and she is giving that to her recorder. And she is setting that on the top setting head rod. Moving it to zero point nine. Zero point nine, perfect. And we will come over here and we will reset our timer. And now we are counting down our 40 seconds for our next sample. Complete. 